Hey, it's Nicole. I'm the ELA Content Development Manager here at Nurse Hub, here to bring you another question of the day. This slide says that this aligns with the HESI A2 exam, but I want to point out that also on the T's, you will be asked to make inferences. I've seen a ton of feedback from you guys in our Facebook groups and on our chat and intercom that say that you really do get asked questions about inferences, so this is a very important skill to practice. Hang with me here. Also, head over to nursehub.com, become a premium member, and you can gain access to over 7,500 questions, quizzes, lessons, my HESI A2 reading comprehension course, and much more. Let's dive in. Just as a quick reminder for you, how we make inferences is we pull textual evidence coupled with our background knowledge to be able to make an inference. So here is a typical question that you could see about making a general inference about a text. This is not about something specific, it's about the text as a whole. I want you to take a moment here to pause and read this passage. Then we will look at the multiple choice and see if you get the answer correct. Pause the video here if you guys need more time to read. Press play when you're ready to move forward. So when you're making an inference, again, I want you to think, what's the topic? What background information do I bring to this topic? And then what inference can I make? Keep these three questions in mind as you answer the multiple choice question that follows. What inference can you make about the text? Go ahead and attempt to answer this question. I'm going to give you 20 seconds on the clock now. Okay, time's up. Let's go ahead and see if you got this answer correct. So A is the best answer here. Limiting the study of meteors to those from a specific asteroid belt would not be sufficient enough to understand the solar system's expansive past. I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step how you should answer types of questions like these and really see how we can get this as our correct answer. First, I wanna answer this question, what's the topic? I see primitive meteorites as a potential topic also historical record left by magnetic fields, different origins, physical and chemical history. The Tangish Lake meteorite helps evaluate events earlier in history. So I'm really seeing things about these meteorites being repeated. I know that meteorites are in space and I know that they are part of our solar system. That's some background information I can bring. If you know more, that's really cool. I also see formed in the Kuiper belt in the outer solar system three million years ago and gives us ideas about the solar system's first minerals. So these meteorites are kind of like helping scientists discover things about our solar system. So here's an inference that I can make. Historical information about the solar system can be found while studying different meteorites. All right, now let's see if my inference aligns with any of the multiple choice. Okay, let's take a look at the correct answer. I think that you can see how A aligns best with my inference. Limiting the study of meteorites to those from a specific asteroid belt would not be sufficient enough to understand the solar system's expansive past. The author states that scientists can understand the solar system's history by investigating meteorites of different origins. Later, the author includes information about the Tagish Lake meteorite, which helps evaluate events earlier in the history of the solar system's distant realms. 
The author also adds that the Tagish Lake meteorite was formed in the Kuiper Belt in the outer system. So it was not from an asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. With this information, we can infer that limiting the study of meteorites from a certain origin would not be sufficient enough to understand the solar system's past. Basically, scientists will need to study different meteorites. Okay, let's take a look at the incorrect answer explanations in case you got this one wrong. The path of the Tagish Lake meteorite was mostly dependent on the solar system's first minerals. We cannot make an inference about the path of this meteorite based on the information provided to us in the text. The author does mention that the meteorite formed about 3 million years after the appearance of the solar system's first minerals, but we cannot use this information to infer how much influence these minerals had on its orbit or path. Meteorites must maintain a certain temperature while in orbit, especially when moving to Jupiter's orbiting asteroid belt. We cannot make this inference based on the text. The author mentions that the Tagish Lake meteorite heated up to 250 degrees Celsius while it moved to the planet's orbiting asteroid belt but it makes no mention of the typical temperature for all meteorites. Here's the last one. The most famous and well-known meteorites originated from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. This is not necessarily a logical inference that we can make from the text. The author does say that the Earth has plenty of meteorites on it for it to study, most of which come from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. But this does not mean that these asteroids are more famous or well-known than other asteroids. In fact, the author ends the text with information about an asteroid that did not originate from Mars or Jupiter. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for hanging with me. Don't forget to head over to nursehub.com, become a premium member to gain access to over 7,500 questions, quizzes, lessons, my HESI course is up there for reading comprehension. Tease is coming soon. See you guys next time.